Dermot, what a game here today. 121 to 217. It's Monaghan who will stay in Division 1. What do you make of the game? Yeah, what a tonic to leading into the championship there. Um, I, Mon Monaghan will be absolutely uh, over the moon with that performance. I mean, they were dead and bur buried with five minutes to go in the game and they came back. And probably, you know, they were the one team that looked like they were going to win in extra time. You know, their old guard stepped up to the plate uh, and saw them over the line. But what a game. They, they got a standing ovation by their small fans here after the game. They wait around till the team come out again fantastic game 100 minutes of high intensity football I can't get better than that we'll talk about the first half so it was Galway who led by three at the break they very much looked like they were they were on top then yeah they were you know they were, their game plan was working well they were counter attacking they were creating a lot of goal chances you know there was a huge scoring on both sides but I'd also say that there was a lot of chances missed there was a lot of goal chances both goalkeepers were very busy and uh, Galway can be very happy with that as, as well as Monaghan but I suppose the guile of the older guys for Monaghan probably saw them through um, Paul Connery got a black card about five minutes to go in the game and Monaghan ju just took over then and um, you know Jack McCarran what a performance he actually only came on uh, in uh, just at the water break in the first half so he missed 50 minutes of the game and he still ended up with 7.6 from play unbelievable performance and all the scores were from far out the, on the on the sidelines and brilliant scoring so what a performance for him. Absolutely, and they were big scores, weren't they? I was actually speaking to the manager there, um, David from Monaghan, after the game, and he said he's absolutely delighted for Jack just because he's really been through the ringer, a lot of injuries, and he couldn't get over his performance here today. He was just delighted for him. Yeah, himself and Darren Hughes, and you know, and Darren came on and he actually got a black card as well, so he missed ten minutes of that game, and um, he was fantastic. He really bossed the game. He controlled the game. Conor McManus wasn't as influential as he usually is, but he still got some vital scores. So, you know, it was still the old guard the experienced players that saw them over the line but they do have some very energetic uh, footballers out there there's a lot of energy you know they were they were still going well in, in the 100th minute they were the uh, team attacking so you know I'm sure Banty and Donny Buckley and the, uh, and the management team would be very very pleased with that going into the championship Absolutely and just speaking on Conor McManus I was watching him just before the first of the, se the second half just before the break as I went into extra time and he was waiting and waiting waiting for his opportunity you know that experience really showed and you could see when he got it he had no other plan than putting that over the bar he's not afraid of taking them pressurised kicks Yeah but that that's the experience I suppose that Mon had had and Galway didn't Galway were very wasteful when there were five points up they had a few chances to kill the game off and they didn't do it that just comes with experience Conor Mc Man, it's, it's very funny. He just hovers around. He waits that opportunity. But what a raider he has! He rarely misses a, a shot. But on the other side, Jack McCarran did it as well for that to, to, to win it by a point. What a score that was! You know, on the 45 under pressure, he slotted it straight over the bar. So, you know, the forward line is moving well for Monaghan. And in general, they seem to develop their style of play over this league. You know, they, they're they're not as reliant on Conor McManus as they were, and they're still you know very competitive and winning games. So, you know, they're in good stead going into the, the Fermanagh game in a few weeks time. And just speaking on relying on Conor McManus, is that what happened with Galway? Are we relying on Shane Walsh? Is that is that what happened here today? Well, to be honest with you, I think that today Shane had one of his quieter games. He was double marked there for a while. So, and Galway still had the game nearly out, out of reach, but didn't see it off. You know, in fairness to Park, he's brought a lot of young lads through there. Uh, you know, in COVID, they haven't got many t many games. So, he's blooded a lot of players and these guys will gain from that experience I know it's very disappointing going down to uh, division uh, going down a division but like at the end of the day we're playing Roscommon uh, go we're playing Roscommon in a few weeks time that's the big game for Pork and his, and, and his team and when they dust down and, and get over the disappointed they've had um, 100 minutes of high intensity football they've blooded a lot of young players over, tr through these 3 or 4 games and a lot of them have come up trumps so they'll be going into Roscommon game full of, full of energy as well you know Porrick Joyce, you've played with him many years. He was very upset after the game and of course only so, but he didn't come out, he didn't speak to the media. Um, what do you think? He's just very disappointed? Yeah, that's Porrick. He, you know, he's a very, very confident player and you know, always wanted to win as a player and the same way as a management manager, he, you know, he wants to win all the time. And you know, I think himself, he knew if, if, there, if there was the likes of Porrick Joyce out there with 10 or 15 minutes to go, that game would have been over. And it's, that's probably the most frustrating thing for him when you play well, really well and lose. 
but on Porrick's you know when Porrick looks back at the video and, and looks at that game he's in an awful lot better situation than he was after getting the, the, the drabbing down in uh, Killarney against Kerry like at that stage you know things were looking very bad now at least we put in a huge performance blooded a lot of players didn't pick up any injuries and we're going to Ross Common with kind of a small pep in our step Absolutely. And looking ahead to that championship, they did have not a bad league campaign. You know, it was tough against Kerry. They had a good win against Roscommon. Then against Dublin, it was only four points against the All-Ireland champions. There is a lot of positives here. Yeah. And if you look at the back line that Galway have there, and it's kind of been our Ackley's heel for a long time. But a lot of these players now have marked quality players in this league. Top quality players. They won't mark as good of players as them ever. That's the standard that you can't get much better than the players they've marked over the while. And they've come, they've come up OK they've learned a lot from it so for a young team they'll, they'll come on an awful an awful lot from that so you know they just need to kind of build on it now and really focus in you know dust down and get ready for us common and what about championship how do you think they'll go in championship is common the big game if they win that yeah it's all about the Roscommon game now and you can't look any further Roscommon are a fantastic team you know they have they, they, they seem to have got the advantage over Galway in the last few years and I suppose always historically they've been very good even in 1998 when Galway won the All-Ireland Roscommon brought them to extra time Anthony Cunningham and McGollaman is over Roscommon I'm sure he'll have he'll have spies in at Pierce Stadium watching us tra- watching Galway train for the next few weeks he'll know us inside out so it's going to be a fantastic game. That Roscommon team have a lot of good players too. Um, you know, they're a Division 1 team. So Galway and Roscommon and Mayo, that's a very competitive uh, Connacht Championship. Absolutely. And Monaghan now are going in in a high against Fermanagh in three weeks' time. Yeah, and they're on the good side of the draw. Like, you know, what a, what a tonic for the championship for these guys now. You know, they'll be bouncing a train and everyone will be trying to get back uh, to play. They're, they're playing Monaghan or playing Fermanagh. That'll be a tough, tough uh, game. But you would think that this kind of victory will get them over that game. And they're not meeting uh, Don- Donegal or Tyrone. They're on the other side of the draw. So they could potentially get to a... Um, Ulster final and if they get to there who knows but the Banty and his management team Donny Buckley is, o- is only his first year in you can see the stamp that he's put on the team they're playing more kind of an attacking style energetic game so um, they'll be delighted w- w- with the performance and uh, you know who knows where, where it'll end for them this year and just speaking on their style there for a minute, Rory Began, he has his own style. He's playing up there in full forward at one stage, constantly in the other half of the pitch. You wouldn't want to be nervous seeing him running up. No, and there was one stage there he was actually tackling Conor Gleeson coming out with the ball. He fouled him. I've never seen that before, a goalie tackling a goalie in play. And uh, But on the other side, he nearly got lobbed when um, when Indo Tierney took a shot and it hit yeah. the crossbar. So, but he, it's fantastic. He's he's really been, uh, you know, changing up the game, how gold keepers play coming out the field I'm sure all the young goalkeepers down across the country are doing this at underage just seeing Rory Began do this He's a fanta- he actually missed 245s today which is not like him but he's such an influential player and if you look at Monaghan the big players for Monaghan are all the most more experienced players and they're still there doing it uh, for, for 10 years and they'll do it this year so you know it's very good for Monaghan and Dermot, we were talking just walking in. There was a little buzz today. There was people here, supporters. It was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic. You know, it's summer days, dry dry sod. Uh, both teams very fit. No experiments going on. Everyone playing their full team, you know, playing their systems that they're going to play in championship. High intensity stuff. Um, fantastic to see it. You know, there was only 500 people here, but it sounded like there was 10,000 here <laughs> with the way they were shouting. The, the uh, supporters uh, clapping the man and team off. Brilliant to see that and uh, hopefully we can get more crowds back and roll on the championship. Brilliant, Dermot. Thank you. Thanks very much.